Golf Tech is attempting to revolutionize the golf instruction industry with nearly 200 worldwide locations. Giving instruction to the masses isn't easy, but with more than 7 million lessons taught, Golf Tech thinks they found the winning formula. Part of that equation is making sure you have the right equipment. And better fit clubs just go straighter. With enough speed to be able to roll right over the shaft and pop into the hole. With simulators and shopping centers, Golf Tech is banking on the rain or shine model to continue influencing golfers. Nick Clearwater leads Golf Tech's instruction platforms and coaches several PGA Tour players. He's the perfect person to bring us inside their Denver headquarters to show how they bring instruction and fitting to golfers like you. Let me be a guinea pig. Help me out with my swing. Yeah. Have you seen your swing in 3D in a while? Um, it's been a little bit. So we're measuring this in every single lesson. There's never a point in time when we'd skip that. See a bunch of numbers and a bunch of data in six degrees of freedom right there. So six degrees of freedom means you're measuring both rotation yeah. on three different axes, and then you're measuring lateral motion up, down, left, right, front, and forward. You're beating me to the punch. OK. That's just, exactly right. Yeah, no. I just want to make sure Thanks. we get this clear enough. Vertical launch, the peak height of the shot, the amount of side spin that you had on that, and that's really just the tilting of the spin axis, or which way it curved, and we're measuring yeah. that. And then the actual carry distance that you hit all those shots. Those are pretty close to the tour averages, 41 degrees with the shoulders, and 12 would be really good, 16-ish with the hips. So relative to the PGA Tour players we've tested, you're right about in the middle of that, top of the swing. All the numbers are basically green. The hips weighs a little bit more toward than that tour so average I want to get that to about four. You don't have to. Uh, it's more just to recognize that's what you do. What's the tour averages you have for that? Four inches for the hip sway and the shoulder sway. Basically the same, 3.9. Uh -huh. Same point, though. It doesn't mean that that's what you have to do. But is there any part in my swing that you would say is maybe kind of starting to get outside that? Not much. Take a look at these, though. So the amount that your shoulders are bent forward mm -hmm. on both these pictures, and then you see how that shoulder sway is reading red. By now, most of the players we've tested, the PGA Tour average is about two inches to three inches of sway already at this point. Mm. You make up a ton of ground in the backswing all the way at the top, and you're well within those ranges. If you wanted to be more like the PGA Tour players that you see on TV every week, this would be it. On the backswing, you actually need to bend yourself backward ever so slightly more sooner in the backswing, mm -hmm. and that will push the sway towards the target. By the time the shaft's parallel to the ground, this is how it should feel with your back to help you learn how to extend more, or just get that sensation. So by the time the club is here, you need to feel as if your back is just vertical. You got it. It's not meant that that's actually what you're going to do, but let's check it out. Nicely done. So I just did a little, little half swing right there. The one on the left is the new one? This is the one that First one. was more problematic. Yep. More bent forward, shoulder sway more away. You and I both know, don't have a clue what this is actually going to look like, but let's take a look at it. And we're about at the same point in time. Now your shoulder bend is decreased by 12 degrees. And even looking at that picture from the front, you notice how your head relative to the G in the background has gone down some? Yeah. That's absolutely. the part that you're actually doing a little bit different here. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing a yellow and a red number is not as good as two green numbers. Well, it's not even that it's wrong or better or something. It's just starting to tell you that you're straying from those tour averages. So mm -hmm. a lot of good players, which was your point, like Matt Wolf, sure. or you watch Victor hit. Whoever. They can have numbers that are well outside the ranges and accommodate it somewhere else. If you just wanted to start building a swing that looked like tour players, this is one that's really often overlooked. The forward bend here is a key separator to skill level. Mm -hmm. The better golfers are stretched out more. They're bent back more degrees. Mm -hmm. You see that number changing there. Where it usually goes wrong, though, is the person hitting doesn't understand how much to do something, how long to do it, when to do it, anything in there. So then at the top of the swing, it doesn't look right, doesn't match any yeah. sort of real numbers. It's rarely, if ever, a flexibility or I can't do it part. It's always a lack of understanding and either poor instruction or just wasn't tailored well enough for the student in front. So the first one is the sting and flexion. Yeah. Very short. I mean, I hit it okay, but yeah, you're still it's definitely challenging to kind of get the bottom right. If you just stuck the club like in your chest, 
at the top of the swing, that needs to be at least horizontal to the ground, if not a couple degrees backward. Now, I'm not saying to actually go back any further than that or raise the shaft up any higher, bend back any more than you are. Mm -hmm. But if you did want to hit it farther, that would be a way to do it because mm -hmm. it just helps raise your arm up higher and higher. So even if you don't hit this one hard, stretch the yeah. backward bend out as much as you can. And then let's compare those. So <laughs> swing on the left is your old man swing. So you're actually eight degrees forward on the backward bend on the picture on the left. Yeah, so that shoulder so bend piece swing, is the right? one I'm looking at. Absolutely. You can see how the butt end of the club up here, how much mm -hmm. further that's traveled. Same thing for the sweet spot. That's what's enabling you to really have the start of hitting a ball really far. Yeah. The downswing is then the tricky part. So that's where a lot of people go wrong as well. You get into the backward bend piece, but then you have to bend forward. Mm -hmm. And then you bend backward again coming through the ball. Yeah. I'm going to be going back as I'm rotating. I'm going to start extending. You got it. Got a little bit of tilt this way. Yep. So there's your zero degree shoulder bend where this mm -hmm. sensor is just vertical. On the way down, by the time the shaft's parallel to the ground, looking at that number again, you know, so it's pretty close to where you started, around yeah. 40, 41. Mm -hmm. Then at this point in time, which is when people go, do it wrong, they start too late, this is when you want to start bending backward all the way through. And now when you look at that same measurement on that one, you're at about 30 degrees back all the way and finish. If you don't do that, it's really hard to swing fast. Uh, people talk about using the ground. I'd refer to that maybe a little differently and talk about how you need to move yourself around faster mm -hmm. to help you pull on the shaft and raise that upward, which adds a bunch of speed to the club head. It's going to be this turning, extending, yeah. a little bit of left tilt. Got it. Getting back into that almost original posture. Exactly. As I'm rotating, and then again, I'm going to start extending this way and maybe a little right tilt. Definitely. To shot. 49 to the right is about uh, what your tour players would do when your right arm's parallel to the ground. So just even move all the way to the follow through where your right arm's parallel, your humerus is parallel. Got it. So there's where you're describing 15 to 20 back, 49 to the right from that side view camera, you can see it. And then you just keep going, and the rest is just the residual trying to slow down the swing. Out of anything you could find that's really similar from tour player to tour player, that's the one. And I have yet to find a, a book that I'm reading that has ever described that. And then being able to measure your swing just cuts through the, the nonsense so much faster and lets you get down to the root cause of what's wrong. So now you can even do it as a demonstration. The minute that you bend backward into the amount of time and space you'd want, yeah. you'll start to actually hear that beep. So the okay. point is to hear that noise as early as you can in the backswing. Gotcha. OK, let me try that again. I'd start by, you can hear it a little bit later than uh, when the shaft's parallel. Good, you got it. You're ready. So that's a good way to train the feel. Now you can hit a shot and we'll see when it actually yeah, occurs. That's well. But that's a great way to just come in here and train, practice it yourself, and recognize right and wrong. You get a different feel for it. So the swing you just made with the biofeedback piece is on the right, and the one that you made earlier is on the left. Right. So the 45 degree forward bend, the point two away with your shoulders, you've actually moved the sensor away from there. Okay, they didn't and just it. what's different on that. So you have all these different data points. I like this because it's just not an opinion. The data drives decisions, which then makes the whole process and the whole lesson taking piece so much easier to do. Nice shot. Yeah. There you go. So Scott went from slicing to push drawing most of the shots. Looks like he's working on a little bit of his follow through with Ty here today. Ty's looking at his very first swing ever. How long ago was that, Scott? 100 years ago? Yes. Yeah, it's been a while. The beginning. Oh, seven, right. Back to the beginning. Golf tech's changed, and so has your game, for sure. Scott came in with a typical over-the-top motion. He tended to really cup his wrists at the top. No compression on the ball. We got connected, and we've been together maybe four or five solid years here, and I've seen his wow. handicap go down. He's challenged himself in the club championships. So you can come in and practice on your own, which is awesome. You still have the same tools to be able to do that. A lot of people are trying to practice. It's not really effective or helping them at all anyway. Everybody's just trying to do the same thing, help the people in their community play better, and this is an easy way to do it. Coming up. 2,000 and 2,500 would be a good range for you. You're barely on the high side of that. I mean, that's a really well-fit driver for you. 